We must start the program with a prayer from one of our spiritual leaders from the Hopi Nation. One thing we ask you is for complete silence. And if you won't wander around, please. David Manyanga will open our program with a prayer. David Manyanga börjar med en bön. Now we'll have some music from the uh, Mohawk and the Hopi Nation. This is going to be a song that's going to be in line with the kind of feeling we want to establish this afternoon here.
that the United Nations is not able to fulfill its uh, duty, think, and that they are not injecting a uh, proper spiritual attitude. In America, the Indian people have no representation in the government, and those who do are traitors. And we see the United Nations employing the same tactics with all of the people of the world. The United Nations still talks about the earth and treats this little sphere like it was a some type of technological baseball. We came here hoping that we could express our belief and our knowledge that the earth is our mother, that it is a delicate uh, little sphere someplace in space, and that we love it very much. And we hope somehow that we can contribute something to the people in this conference and this part of the world that would let we'll be, them understand what we, we feel for the earth. You'll be hearing from all of the Indian nations here, uh, and, and we have some very spiritual people with us. And this is where we get our strength. I'm going to stop talking now and we'll have some more music and perhaps a song. Southwest area long before Columbus ever wandered out over the ocean, got lost, and finally landed up in our area and called us Indians. He thought he landed around close to Indian country in East India. There were villages already setting up in northern part of what is now called Arizona on three mesas. And there are the elders of the People set up their own form of government based on religious principles. And they have a knowledge of another world someplace that was totally destroyed because man has interfered with the law of the great spirit and nature. And very few people came out of that life and came to this new land and life. Here they met the great spirit whom the Hopi called Masawa. And he, in turn, gave 
the people instructions as how to live in this new land and life, how to take care of plant, animal, birds, and the whole living things on this earth. Then he told us to go to four directions upon this land in North America. And they even went across beyond great waters, ocean. There were a separation there, what you call today American Indians, left there to hold the land through rituals and songs and ceremonies. And we held that land and life in a good state. There are clear rivers, green valleys, trees, animals, birds, everything was in good order. Our white brothers separate from us at the very beginning of uh, life and bring about destructions of our land so much that there's pollution of land, air, rivers, and everything taking place all over that land today. And he went to this continent somewhere and someday he will come back to us and he's supposed to help us to take care of the land in a better way with what he invent. The Hopi people have never made any treaty with any nation that came upon our continent, not with even with the United States government. So we still consider ourselves as a Hopi sovereign nation or Hopi independent nation, and we who are here today represent them in such a uh, way, and we hope that we may talk with some of the United Nations people and other nations in this country while we're here for the next two weeks. That was Thomas Benyaka from the Hopi, Hopi Nation. And we're going to, uh, first I'd like to say to the press that we're going to make available to the press a conference at about four o'clock. And right now we'll hear from Diwa Senta, who is a clan mother from the Onondaga Nation. Just a few miles south of Syracuse, New York, the Onondaga Indian Reservation. We have come here to sort of educate you. We want to tell you that there are many terms used to identify us. You have been taught to call us the Iroquois Six Nation Confederacy. When the French first came over into our land, they called us Iroquois. When the English came into our country, they called us Six Nations Confederacy. We call ourselves, we term ourselves as the people of the Haudenosaunee, which means the people of the Longhouse, for we surely lived in longhouses, not in teepees, as you all visualize the Indians, the way Indians live. We had a high plane of civilization. The Pullman trains patterned their upper and lower sleeping berths from the people of the Six Nations. I am a clan mother of my clan. This was the way we had of identifying our families, the families that we did not marry into because we did not have the names like Jones, Brown, Smith. So we had clans that we followed and did not marry into. So I am one of the many other clan mothers that are back home. We had women's suffrage way before the people of the United States. The women just obtained their voting rights just a few years ago. This is the first time in history that we, the traditional people, have been able to go out into the world and tell you something about ourselves. I am not a citizen of the United States. I am a citizen of my Onondaga Nation. We came here with our 
I came here with my Onondaga uh, Iroquois Six Nation Confederacy passport. I am happy to see so many of you with long hair. I hope that you are not wearing that long hair just because it is the style, the fog. Long hair means freedom. It also means that you are strong for the good things in life. Where I come from, we have a great battle going right now that the United States is drafting our boys. We have a constitution that says that. I'm not talking about United States Constitution, our own, my own. We are also trying to get our own education so that we can teach our children our language, our songs, about our medicine and our Indian ways because it is easy for our people to get lost when we are suppressed. We are also trying to get back some of our wampums. Wampum is a record of our happenings. This is our way of recording the history of the people that have been taken away from us fraudulently. You have heard much about banners all over about writ power. We have two interpretations of that. The people, the Indians who grew up in the cities, the unfortunate ones, term red power as uh, sort of what people call on the militant side sometimes. Our interpretation of red power is for us to become strong in our Indian songs in our Indian dances. There is so much that could be said, but I just want to say that I hope with this generation here, we are looking to you to help us and understand us. Shekeyan zone benashni, Shekeyan zone benashni, God ne hide shachne se, God ne hide shachne se, God ne hine yo wo hey ne ya, God ne hine yo wo hey ne ya, ene ya o wo hey ne ya, ene ya o wo wo ya. Hey, uh, I will repeat again that Brother Robert, sister Miriam had said that uh, they were very happy to see many of you let your hair grow. That's in our property too. Sometime we would realize that we have taken the wrong path and if we realize that we are not taking the right path, the people would let their hair grow. The earth has been torn to pieces and she's bleeding. How can we cure our mother? Only to uh, follow the spiritual path so that the Great Spirit will cure our Mother Earth. I'm very, very happy to say that we have shown something here. Whatever we planted here may grow and bear fruit that we may harvest. Some uh, harvest a good crop at the end as a spiritual crop. Let us not forget the teachings of the Great Spirit. Let us, uh, let us all follow him so that we may not destroy ourselves. We want to deliver ourselves from destructions. I look upon all you people being holding some religious order 
that I would say that you are all my children. I pray for any, all of the people all over the world so that they may have long lives and happy lives and have abundance of food for all so that we may be live in happily. I'll repeat again that I'm very happy that you are here with us today. And I would again say that always adhere to the teachings of a great spirit because it's the only remedy to our cause. Since we are here, we are very, very much pleased that we have met you here, uh, the faces of you people who have never been across here before, and we now we have come. Uh, this has been prophesied too that that we will come some we will come together someday in this manner in foreign countries so that we can solve our problems together so so that we may not destroy ourselves. Our souls, after getting out of the city of Stockholm, we had a long session of just laughing and telling old coyote stories and jokes. And we still have the courage to smile and laugh. We seem to laugh even more now. And another thing I'd like to comment on is the long hair. Among my people, the Wailaki Nation, to wear long hair means to be happy. When we're in mourning, then we burn our hair and rub ashes. And we wear short hair for the period of mourning. When our hair grows out, we're happy again. And I come here with a lot of misconceptions of looking for Vikings. But even if some of the old spirits have been lost somewhere in all these green trees, I still am happy because of all the beautiful people of the descendants of those great warrior society at one time. I, w I would also like to add my thanks. I'm, I'm in the company that I'm traveling with, I'm very much a child, even though I'm older than many of you. In the company that I'm traveling, on my sides and on both sides, represent wisdom that has been handed down for thousands of years. And I'm very childlike in the presence of them. But my words seem to come very much better and stronger when I'm in their presence. But I would say the majority of our people listen to our grandfathers who have told us continuously that our nation continues as a sovereign nation on the land that it has occupied in North America long before any Europeans knew there was a North America. In our language, in Mohawk, the way you say white man is Kyorosaka. <laughs> and the way you say Indian is Ogwehunwe. Now, those two words are not racial kind of words. The way you say white man who has white skin is Lohnonako, who's greedy, who's slippery to talk to, you know, like trying to hold on to a squirming fish in your bare hands. And so we define ourselves as people. And our grandfathers have instructed us to look to other people who are real people as brothers. We would become diluted with American ways, and some of us would become so much like that that they would not be able to be distinguished from any other Americans in that way that they also would become greedy, pale, and slippery to talk to. And our grandfathers instructed us that the time is coming and that the time, in fact, is now that our people are taking up what they once had, not by way of world power, but by the way of definitions of things and the way we live, the value structure, our ideas, our relationships are coming back and that's why we call ourselves yet a sovereign nation. You see, we don't have a large land area base. Where I come from, we have only about 30,000 acres. We don't have diplomats in the other countries. We don't have an embassy here in Sweden. We don't have nuclear, we don't have armies or anything that other Western sovereign nations have. But we continue to belong to the things of the earth. We continue to believe that we're the, s the custodians of the earth and that the ceremonies we do are necessary if life is going to continue. Our grandfathers tell us in, their, in our legends that our people, the Mohawk Nation, will be a, 
a nation long after the United States ceases to exist. And we are not told these things with bitterness, although we do have a lot against the United States government and the Canadian government for the many things that we can talk for hours about to you that they have done with us, to us. Donito Nyamoko.